So let's move to Nemo, the reformatting tool. I will. Uh, this is a summary of the presentation. Small uh, reminder of Nemo main features and principles. Then I will present the Nemo last developments since the last training session, and a small uh, slide on the future developments. And then we will move to the hands-on session. So the current Nemo. Ver uh, the current version of Nemo is uh, this one, the 1 1.6.6, .6. that can be downloaded uh, from a uh, uh, data Net uh, website, and you have there uh, the main re requirements. Um, and uh, you know that Nemo uh, is, is available in interactive and batch mode, and it makes use of the data Net voc vocabulary. So that means that if you are working with vocabs which are new, you need to update the uh, vocabularies uh, before using Nemo and use it through Nemo software. So Nemo, as I said before, the tool for uh, data file conversions to CDataNet format. So input files on Nemo are not at CDataNet format, they are ASCII files, and the output file on ne of Nemo can be ODV, NetCDF, or MedAdlas CDataNet files. Uh, on one run, Nemo is able to convert one directory with homogeneous, this is the, the important word, word the homogeneous ASCII files. And at one run, it will be able to convert it into one uh, uh, monostation files like this one, or on, uh, one uh, multi-station file aggregating all the station files from, uh, from the directory. Or uh, it's able to convert one ASCII file with multi stations, but the description of the stations in the files must be homogeneous too. And the Nemo will be able to convert it to several monostation files or to one multi station files at CDataNet format. What is important is the word is homogeneous. Here it's not CDataNet, here it's CDataNet format. So, Nemo is able to convert vertical profiles, time series, and trajectories. But we have to be clear on what Nemo considers as a vertical profile, a time series, and a trajectory. A vertical profile, the reference parameter is depth or pressure. And this depth or this pressure is increasing. The, uh, the, the position is the same for all the profiles. A time series is a, a, a file where the reference parameter is that, that time increasing at the same position, latitude and longitude, for all the time series. And a tra for a trajectory, the reference parameter is depth or pressure, which is constant, more or less, and the position, lo geographical location, change at, on each data line. So the way Nemo uh, managed this kind of file. Another thing which is important, and you will be trained on that today, is that uh, Nemo interacts with Mikado to be able to generate the XML description of the data. Uh, and, it does, and also it's able to generate a coupling table that can be used by the download manager and now by the replication manager. So, uh, while converting your ASCII file to CDataNet files, Nemo is able to generate a coupling table which is in the database embedded in Nemo and that you can export as a flat, flat file. And Nemo is able to generate a, a, a CDI summary CSV file that can be used by Mikado to generate the XML description of your CDIs. So, this will be uh, demonstrated uh, later on with the exercises. The principles uh, of Nemo are very important. Uh, it's uh, that uh, Nemo is, is, read, is almost uh, able to convert any ASCII format to translate it to CDataNet format uh, because the user describes the input format using Nemo and then Nemo is able to find the necessary information in the input data files. But what is mandatory 
for Nemo is that a set of input files must be homogeneous. I mean, this means that the same information in all the files that you will that you want to 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 convert in one run must be homogeneous. The same information must be at the same place in the file or in the same column if it's a CSV format and must be at the same format. This means uh, that uh, uh, the temperature, uh, uh, if it's a CSV file, must be in the same column. If it's a ASCII file, not CSV, the temperature must be in the, all the files from the same character till the, the same character of, to the end. So we cannot convert all the files with Nemo. Binary format are not, uh, are not con uh, cannot be converted by Nemo, like Excel or Word. The file has to be first reformatted to text file. Uh, we cannot convert files which do not respect Nemo pre-requirements, which is uh, the homogeneous uh, position of the information in the files. And we cannot convert files which are not vertical profiles, time series, or trajectories as previously defined. And I will show you some examples of files which will not be converted by Nemo. This is a CSV file. As you can see, you have all the information separated by uh, comma. But you have these extra characters, the codes, which are not standard for a CSV file. So this will not be um, a file that can be converted by Nemo. The codes has to, have to be deleted first. This is a type of file that is not being converted by Nemo. And the reason why, it's because it's not a vertical profile, it's not a time series, and it's not a trajectory at the sense of Nemo. For example, uh, the time is not increasing. It's constant for all the files, so it's not a time series. The latitude and the longitude is constant also, so it's not a trajectory. And the minimum depth and the maximum depth are also constant, 16 meters. So it's not a vertical profile. So this kind of file, which is typically a biological data file, is not yet um, uh, able to be uh, converted using Nemo. This will be part of our next developments for Nemo, but up to now, these files cannot be converted. So, what are the last developments of Nemo? Since the last training session, which was three years ago, we had eight new releases of Nemo, and two of them were major releases. The others were only bugs corrections. And uh, from the last uh, EmotNet chemistry training session, some of you may have been there, uh, it was one year ago, we already, or also had three new releases since then, and with one major release. So the present version of Nemo was delivered uh, more than six months ago, last November. And uh, since the, the last training course, course, the two major releases are listed on this slide. First one uh, released in June uh, three years ago. Uh, the main improvements were, was the management of the SDN reference which are the links to the CSR catalog, to the CDI catalog, and to the C17 vocabulary, so to the ship references. And this was a requirement of the Copernicus uh, uh, consortium, which whom we exchange data, and they need to have the ship in the data files, not only in the metadata. Um, we, in that version, we introduce also the management of instruments used for the measurements and the management of the four rate equation for XBTs. That also was a requirement for Copernic for, from Copernicus. Then uh, last year, we released the 1.6.4 version of Nemo with the major improvement on the management of input CSV files and the detection of deprecated parameters in your NEMO, in your previous NEMO models. So let's uh, go, I will give more details about all these new uh, developments.
The SDRN reference tag is used in CDATANET files for linkage to external reference, and is this is the catalog inter interoperability. You have reference to the CDI with the local CDI ID. You have reference to the crew summary report with the uh, CSR identifier, and you, you are able to also have reference to ISIS platform in your uh, files, and this is managed by NEMO. How? On the, on the cruise collection uh, tab of NEMO, you have the local CSR identifier, which is used to make the SDN reference linkage to the CSR catalog. You have the ship code, which is used to make the linkage to the C17 uh, vocabulary list. And the linkage to the CDAT, CDI catalog is done automatically by NEMO when NEMO generates the local CDI ID. And the results in the files is this kind of, uh, of, um, of lines that you will find. This one is a reference to the CSR. This one is a reference to the uh, ship list. And this one is a reference to the CDI with the local CDI ID. And there is a local, also the local identifier of your cruise. Local means the, the identifier that you use in your data center. So the syntax of this SDN reference is explained on this slide. Um, you have uh, three, I think it's called attributes, I'm not sure. Let's say attributes. Three attributes. The xlink attribute is a href reference of the URL or URN of the XML document. The role is is described by or is observed by. This is for the CDI and this is for the uh, ship and for the CSR. And the type that is to link with the CDI, the CSR, or the ship uh, C17 list of, of ship. And there is one optional attribute within the scope and it's used only in ODV files because in ODV files you have all the SDN reference making reference to the local a CDI ID at the, at the top of the file. So we make reference to the local CDI ID uh, um, using the scope uh, attributes. Like in this, as in this example, for example, you have three, three links, the one to the CSR, the one to the ship, and the one to the local CDI ID. And in the NetCDF file, the SDN reference is a variable. It's, it's a 3D array, and the, um, uh, which is uh, like this. And uh, the sorry, and the content of this array is uh, the, the SDN reference with the syntax explained before. And in the Metadlas files, it's more or less the same than in the CT, the ODV files except that the SDN reference is in the station, so you don't ha need to have the, sc the scope elements, the scope attributes in the SDN reference, because it's embedded in the station, in, uh, whereas in ODV, it's on the top of the files. So one of the new developments were also, was also to be able to manage instruments used for the measurements of the parameters. And this is in the tab of NEMO, in the data tab of NEMO. You have the possibility to add an instrument uh, by right-clicking on the list. This, um, this open the, select, the, the cont contextual menu, and you can select an instrument for a parameter. And there, you, you have the L22 uh, vocab list to select the instrument. Uh, which, uh, which, with which uh, measurement was performed. And in uh, the ODV and Metadlas file, the instrument will be, is included in the SDN uh, parameter mapping lines. As you can see here, that the temperature has been measured using this tool. And in the NetCDF files, uh, the instrument is defined as two uh, attributes of the geophysical variable. These attributes are the URN of the instrument and the name of, of the instrument. 
it's a bit the, the same for the four rate ex equations that is used for the XBTs. You can, in the data tab of Nemo, you can add the four rate equation for uh, which is linked to the L33 list of vocabulary. So by clicking select there, you will open the L33 list of vocabulary and you will be able to pick up the um, right equation. And this will appear in the data file at in the SDN ma mapping uh, lines, like here, you have the four rate code for the depth of these XBTs. And in the NetCDF files, you will have two attributes of the geophysical variable, which is the four rate URN and the four rate name. So we will manage exercise on that later on. So now I will uh, demonstrate a new um, development of the new management of CSV file. So Nemo was able to manage the CSV file also previously, but uh, at, uh, with the previous version, we converted the files with separators to text file without separators, if you remember. And if you, and these, call, these files were called PF underscore the, uh, something files. Since the last version, uh, the 1.6.4 version of Nemo, there is no more conversion to these uh, ASCII files without separator. Uh, Nemo uh, directly manages the CSV files, but you need to provide additional information in the file type tab of Nemo. Uh, having said that, the previous way of managing CSV file is still working. So if you have models with with uh, CSV files, you can still use them. They are still working. So the new way to manage uh, CSV file has to be, uh, you have a new folder, let's say here, which name is data column selections. And if I zoom in there, you, can, you, you will say to Nemo that you want to use a table to display the data. And that the we will say to Nemo that the column titles are on this line here, which is the sixth line of the file. There you have the name of the parameters. Then, when you arrive on the tab files, uh, the, uh, tab uh, date, the data tab of Nemo, the temperature, pressure, direction, I mean the parameters are in columns, but they are not aligned as you can see. And when you describe them with Nemo, Instead of having the start character and the end character, you have the number of the column. Temperature is in the third column, pressure in the, is in the fourth column, and so on. And the last uh, development that I want to talk about is the detection of deprecated parameters in your models of Nemo. If you open all Nemo models containing depre deprecated terms, they will be replaced on the fly by, by the new ones which replace them in the, uh, in the BODC vocabulary. For example, this parameter has been deprecated and is replaced by this one. So Nemo will open your model and will replace this parameter by this one. So does Octopus too. So, new developments, what is planned for Nemo? The next version is planned to be delivered uh, this fall, and it will take into account the BODV formats and their extensions. And there we have the BODV for biological data, the BODV, uh, BODV extension for cytofluorometry that has been defined by, uh, in the frame of uh, CData cloud project, and the BioODV extension for microplastic that had been defined um, through the Embodnet chemistry project. And of course, always uh, smaller upgrades and small and bugs corrections. Okay, uh, maybe you have questions at that point. Otherwise, we will jump in the hands-on session of Nemo. 
Yes, Alessandra? Okay, if there are no more questions, I will start the train, um, the training. And the objectives are to be trained on the new function of Nemo software. So we will uh, be trained on the management of the SDN reference links to CSR, CDI, and C17 vocab, the management of the instruments, management of the four rates for XBTs, and new way of managing the CSV file. All their exercises are on the OSINT teacher under class exercise uh, NEMO. Under work C data net tools NEMO new function and then class exercise NEMO. So what you have in this uh, directory is a file which is called xbt calmar uh, 97 cruise dot txt. And these are data collected on the research vessel, the French research vessel called La Talente. This is one ASCII cruise file with 81 XBTs in that, and the XBTs are only temperature measurements. This is a file with uh, tabulations as file separators on data lines. The sensor is, which is used is a Parson 536A. A XBTs. There are two measured parameters, depths and temperatures. There are no missing values in the files. And the files contain quality flags, which are the same scale than C data net. So you, have, we, you will have to keep these quality flags in order not to lose them, because the file is already quality checked. So first, I would like you to open the file the cruise file, have a look at it and see how it is organized. Before starting to use Nemo, you have to ask you this question. Is there a file header? Yes or no? Is there a station header? What is the separation between the stations from one station to another one? How can Nemo will, how Nemo will be able to see when we change the station? Is there a specific line at, at the end of each station? A file header is a one line which is only once in the file. A station header is a line without data on the line, without data measurements, which is repeated for all, each station in the file. And a separation between stations is if you have specific, sometimes the stations ends with specific lines. And so please have a look at the file and then run demo. And the first step, because uh, if you don't have already done it, is to select your Edmo code, to select the default directory for data and models, to select the default conversion format, specify, specify that you will need a coupling table, and specify that will, you will need a CDI summary file. So this is the Nemo, and it has to be down in the settings of Nemo. So, uh, this first step is described here for those who are not familiar. So you have to open the options and settings menu of Nemo. Then you have to, uh, uh, to make the default directory where you will save the models of Nemo and where you will find the cruise, uh, the cruise data file that, uh, that is on the ocean teacher. So you have to copy it somewhere on your, compu on your computer and then Tell Nemo where is it, where it is. Enter the Nemo ID of your organization. And you have to click that you want a coupling table. You have to select the default conversion format. And you have, then you will have to open this uh, menu. But I will wait a little bit. Please raise your hand when, if you have questions or when you finish, so that I can move to the next step. Next slide is the information that you will have to input in the CDI. Uh, okay, that is when it's fulfilled. So you have the the path for your uh, files. You have clicked the mapping. You have chosen one default format. 
And then you will have to open this CDI, CDataNet CDI summary part, which is this one. And you will have to input the mandatory information. An Enmo code for the data originator, you put whatever you want. An Enmo code for uh, your uh, data center, which is the distributor of the data. And a platform type for the data. So I told you it was a research vessel, yes? So if that is okay, then you have to open, sorry, open this C Datanet CDI summary by clicking on the little plus there. And there you will have to input this information to, to by clicking on edit you will add this Edmo code. And here you have a, a platform, uh, a list of uh, code, and we, you will have to pick up research vessel in the list. For the originator, actually it's uh, ephemer data, but you can put what you want, it's not a problem. So once you've done that, is it okay? Can I move to the next step? Yes, no, nobody. So here, an example, I have put a, uh, my uh, Edmo number and the one of the originator and research vessel as a platform type. So now I would like you to describe the file. So it's in the file folder, the left part of the file folder of Nemo. You have to say that it is a cruise file because it is what it is. You have one file with 81 stations, so it's a cruise file. You have to browse to select the file with Nemo. You have to tell Nemo that the file contains separators, and these uh, separators are tabulations. You have to select the file type and tell Nemo it is a profile, a vertical profile. And you have to check that the output format, which is pre-selected, is the one you need. If it's not, you, are, you can select another one. So, up. this is in this tab. You have to select once first the cruise file by browsing. And then it will open there. Then you have to tell Nemo that you have separator. Then you have to select the, the type of the profile, uh, the file type, and you have to choose the format in which you want to convert your data. Yeah, sorry, it's tab. We yes. will move to the next step which will be to describe Nemo, the file here in the right hand side. So you will have to describe the file header, the station header, the end of station, and the data termination indicator. And there, it's, you have to answer, to answer this question. Is there a file header? Is there lines that appear only once in the file? Is there a station header? Is it a lines without data measurement on the line? and which is repeated for each station. Is there a specific line for the end of station? What is the separation between two consecutive stations? Are there colon titles? Where? So, you have to answer all these questions using the, the folders of Nemo. First question is, is there a file header? Yes, there is one. These two lines are only repeated once in the files. So you have to select them and then set set, click the set button there, and you will have a, a two appearing there. It means yes, I have a file header and it is two lines. It has two lines. Then next question is Is there a station header? <coughs> Line, station and header is a line with that in only information on the station and no data measurements. As you can see here, uh, there are data measurements 
on the first line. So there is no, the answer to this question is no, there is no station header. So I don't need to describe the station header. Next yeah. question. Is there a specific line for the end of station, a line which separates the station? And you can see here that you have the last data line of one station and the first data line of the second station. So there is no lines which separate the station. You have data there and data there. So the answer to this question is also no. So zero you don't have you next don't step, need to go there. Next question you have to ask yourself is is there a station uh sorry, I've been in the wrong. <laughs> Uh, what is the separation? How can Nemo know that you have a new station in the file? The answer for this uh, for this type of file is that each time that you find Kalmar 97 as a first character on a line, it means that you are in a new station. This is station 1, this is station 2, and when you will arrive to station three, you will still uh, again have Kalmar 97 on as a beginning of a line. So you have to tell Nemo that the data termination indicator is the first line of the st next stations, starting with a constant character string, which is Kalmar. And either you tap, you type the the character string, or you select it and you press the set button. So Nemo will know that when he finds that in the beginning of a line, he's changing station. And, okay, I just select Kalmar and I press set. And last question on this uh, stage. Are there column titles? And if yes, where? Is it, as you told Nemo, it is a comma severity uh, file? With tabulation, this menu is available, and by default, use the table to display the data is checked. You cannot check it, and Nemo will function like, as it used to function before with the uh, comma-separated value files. But if you check it, then it will use a new functionality of uh, managing CSV file. And you can tell Nemo that the titles of the columns are located on line two. So as usual with Nemo, you select the line, you press the set button, and two will be uh, written in the file. Yes, please. So the next, when you finish that, you validate the step. There, validate step, not all step, huh? step. And uh, you must have a green message there. If not, there is a problem. So if you have a green message, then you can move to the next step, which is to describe the cruise. So you click on this folder, and you have to describe the, the, the cruise. And to do that, you have to use the CSR description that you download, that is the XML file. And you have to say that you will, uh, what is the name? Uh, I don't remember, you will uh, make an XML initialization of your cruise. So you click on XML initialization there, and you open the uh, XML files which has been generated using Mikado to describe the, the cruise. And once you've done that, you should have this field filled up, which is the cruise Referent, this will be used to create the local CDI ID of your uh, stations. This is a local CSR identifier of your cruise. And this is a cruise name. And this is the ship on which the cruise was uh, performed. That's it for this step. You can validate it, validate step. And again, you should have a, a green uh, message. And then move to the next step, which is the description of the station. There you will tell Nemo where to find the station number, where to find the, uh, what is the data type. It is XBTs in that case. 
where to find the time, what to find, where to find the date, where to find the latitude, where to find the longitude in the files. So first, station number, it is this one. Three characters there. You select them, then you set them, then you test them to see if you have the, the right value. And when it's OK, you, you go to the next necessary information, which is the data type. Can I move forward? OK. Data type. You have to select basic thermograph in the list. It is the XBTs. You can type H if you want to go directly to H13, to the H list, and select it. OK, then next step. Is that OK? Next step is to tell Nemo where can I find the, the date, the time of the station, and at which, which format. So you select the time, which is there. You describe the format, which is HH24 double dot MM. And you press the set button. And this will tell Nemo that the, the time is on the third line from character 25 to character 29. And then you test it to verify that you have the right value, which is 1021. And you do the same for date, for la longitude and latitude. This is longitude, this is latitude, this is the date. Each time you have to describe the position and the format. So let's go for the date. Date, format, set, test. Always the same. And you must have the same date, of course. Next is the latitude, which is there, this format. Set, test. And for longitude, same. It is there. This format. Set, test. These are all the mandatory information for metadata of a station. The data type, the station number, the time, the date, the latitude, and the longitude. Then you have optional other information. But here in our exercise, we just input the mandatory ones. And once you've done all that, you validate the step, and you should have a green message. So did you manage to have the green uh, message at the end when you validate the step? OK, so we can move to the next one. And this is a more complex one, except that in that case, it's easy because it's only a, a uh, an XBT with two parameters measured. So you have to describe the parameters. You have to add them one by one. And for each of them, you have to give the code, the label, <laughs> the unit, the format, the missing value, if any. But I told you they were not missing value. The position in the file, the position of the QC flag, and the instrument. Then you have to test the values. Then you have to select the vertical reference and select the full rate because this is a XBT's data. We will do that together, of course, in order not to be lost. So you go to the data uh, tab. And first of all, to select uh, something, uh, the, you have to open the contextual menu in Nemo. You have to be in the table there and right click. And if you right click, Oh, sorry. First of all, you have to select which parameter list you want to use. In that case, I want you to use P01 via P02. This is a BODC vocabulary. P09 is for people using Medatlas vocabularies. So click, select the, which vocabulary you want to use, this one, and then go in the, 
in the um, table there, right click to open the contextual menu and then select the parameter list. And once you have selected the parameter list, here you have this menu. First parameter is, is depth. So you have to select, it, you can search for depth, for example, and the code, the right code. No, you cannot search for depth because the, uh, the name of the P02 code for depth is AHGT. JT, so you have to type that. And then you will choose this parameter, select, and then you move to the P01 list and select the P01 code, which is depth below the surface of the water body. And then you select it. And you have it in your table, normally. I can go back. So there, you right click on the table. You open the contextual menu, you, ch you choose parameter list. This is a P02 list of vocabulary. There you need to type AHGT and select it. And there you need to type adept, to choose adept.zz01, ZZ, uh, which is the depth below surface of the water body. You select it and you add it in your table. So now you can type here the parameter label. It is up to you to choose. It, it will be the header column in your... Uh, data files. So you can type def. And then you have to select the unit. So it's always the same principle. You go on the table, you right click to open the, the um, contextual menu. You select a, a P06 unit. As it is uh, def, you can select meters. You select it and it appears in your file, in your tab. So now we know that we have depth in meters and we need to tell Nemo which format is the depth in the file. So we have to right click, select the format, choose the one you want. I choose this one. In case I, do, I go down to more than the 1,000 meter down. So I choose 999.9, 9999.9, and then I have the format. Do I need to go back, or is it okay for you? Back? Back to where? Format. So right click on the table, select the format, choose the format, and then it appears in your table. Next step is to set the position of the parameter in the file. So, okay, I have the depth, but where is it? It is in the colon. Click on the first value of the colon, or on the colon header, I don't remember. You must have this orange uh, color. And then, go down to the table, 
open the textual menu by right, right uh, the contextual menu by right click and set click on set start and and then you will have uh, it says that the depth is in, in the fixed column of your files. Is it okay or should I go back? So you select the depth. You go down to the table and right click to open the contextual menu. You set start and and there you go. Is it okay? Okay, move on. What next? I told you that there are quality flags which are valid in the file, so you don't want to lose them. And the quality flags are here for depth, here for temperature. So we will set the position of the quality flag for depth. So you select the colon, you right click on the line with the depth parameter. You right click and you, you click set flag. And there you will know that the flag is on the seventh colon of your file. So you have the depth in the sixth colon at this format, this unit, and the QC flag of depth is on the uh, seventh colon of the file. And then we have to set the instrument, which it was used to measure the depth. That's it. 